So against my better judgment, I lost around $6,000 in one night. Today, I drive to a warehouse in a remote industrial area almost one hour away from where I live. This is where a private tournament is being hosted and I was invited to come. It's $1,000 per buy-in and the turnout is supposed to be between 30 and 40 people. I go. Props to the host for an awesome setup. There is a screen to display the tourney info a bar with a bunch of drinks, and just a great atmosphere. And oh my god, the complimentary dinner meal during the break was amazing. I'm sure the footage doesn't do it justice. Anyways, here are a few of the pivotal hands. This was the first hand that really dented my stack. Pretty standard cooler, I flopped a set, the villain turned a higher set, we ended up all in, and I had the villain covered, so I wasn't out yet, but was left with less than 15 BBs. This hand, I have ace-king on the button. There are four limpers, and I just jam all in. Everyone calls. The runout is looking pretty good with a king-high flop, and everyone just checking it down. But someone in there ends up making runner-runner nuts straight with ace-10. I am on my second bullet now, and this hand I pick up ace-king again. I 3-bet jam preflop and get called with pocket queens. And here's the run out. Alright, Trevor. Oh, okay. I told you. Nice hand, Trevor. Okay, well, just, just come. You got to Sorry, buddy. <laughs> After the tourney, I played in cash games with some really chill people with great sense of humor and just super fun to be around. I had a blast, even though I did not do so well poker-wise. And now to sum up and um, give you guys the results of that night. Um, firstly, I want to quickly give a shout out to uh, my buddy Trevor and his girlfriend Andrea. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you, Andrea. She was uh, just being awesome, being there as Trevor's emotional support while he played. And I'm just realizing right now that uh, the photo we took is horrendously out of focus, um, my bad. Anyways, that last hand, uh, when I had ace-king, Trevor was the one with the queens to uh, knock me out. So he actually got his revenge because um, a little while ago, I was the one to knock him out um, in a different tournament. After I busted, I played in a cash game and we played 5-5-10, five, five, and for much of later of the night, it was 5-5-10-20 five, five, uh, mixed games. Uh, Hold'em, PLO, and double board PLO. Um, long story short, it, uh, they were just pure D-Gen gambling games that probably uh, was not wise to partake in if, um, if I wanted to make sound financial decisions. Um, results. I fired two bullets and did not cash in the tournament and then uh, played in the cash game that I did not run so well in. So. Against my better judgment, I lost around $6,000 in one night. Anyways, moving on, um, I do have a, uh, relatively speaking, more quote-unquote normal session to share with you guys. And um, it's going to be 2-3 at Starlight. I head to Starlight Casino Poker Room in the afternoon. And as you can see, all the tables are empty. I'm on the list waiting to open a game. After about 45 minutes of waiting, we finally have enough people show up to get a game started. This hand, I pick up three six of diamonds on the button. There are four limpers and I decide to limp as well. The small blind calls and the big blind checks. It's seven handed into a flop of seven king ten with two diamonds. Everyone checks and the turn is ace of hearts. The small blind checks and the big blind bets $10. The middle position, low jack and cutoff calls. 
So easy call for me with great odds for the flush draw. Small blind folds, river is a brick. The big blind leads out for $10 again and only the low jack calls. I miss my draw here, can't rep much with my range and don't have any good blockers for a bluff. So it's just a straightforward fold after missing. Not a particularly interesting line this hand, but it does allow me to grasp the vibe of the table. It's pretty passive with a lot of limping. I adjust to be more aggressive preflop and open more often. In this hand, I pick up ace king at under the gun plus one. There is a under the gun strato for $5, so I'm first to act and I open to $20. Only the small blind calls. It's heads up into a flop of 5 8 8 with two hearts. The villain checks. Not a good flop for my range nor my hand, so I just check back. The turn is an offsuit 4. The villain checks again. My hand has a lot of showdown value, so I just check and continue to navigate to showdown. The river is another 5, and the villain checks once again. Pretty easy check here I think with ace high. I have no need to turn my hand into a bluff, and I'm never getting called by worse. I check and take my hand, and I'm good. This hand, I have ace 3 of hearts under the gun. I limp this hand. Looking back, I do think this is a mistake, but my thought process at the time is, at this point, I'm the player at the table that is opening most often, and definitely the only one 3 betting at all. If I open here with ace 3, I'm getting called down with a lot of random ace x hands that dominate me. So I just decide to limp instead to get in cheap and hope to hit big. Um, not recommended. Anyways, there are 5 more limpers including the small blind, and the big blind checks. So it's 7 handed into a flop of ace ace queen with 2 clubs. It checks to me and I just lead out for $10. Only the player directly to my left calls. The turn is an offsuit 8. I look at the villain stack and he only has 50 something dollars left, not much more than the pot. If he was deeper, I can consider checking for a pot control with trips and basically no kicker. but. With his stack size and possible flush draw out there, I think I just have to jam because I can't risk giving a free card if he's never folding a draw. His flop call basically means flush draw or ace. If he happens to have a better ace, then so be it. I go all in. The villain calls. The river bricks. We table our hands and I lose this one to ace jack. This hand, I have jack 10 in the big blind. The cutoff and the button limps. The small blind raises to $12. To me right now, the late position limpers are just dead money. I decide to 3 bet in this spot to take the pot down now, or play post flop heads up in position as the limpers are most likely going to be squeezed out. I re-raise to $35. As expected, the limpers fold, but the small blind does call. It's heads up into a flop of 6-7 jack with 2 clubs. The villain leads out for $25. Easy call for me with top pair. At this point, my pair of jacks is in the lead most of the time I think, even without a good kicker. There simply aren't a lot of jack x hands that will raise preflop and flat call a 3 bet out of position. Maybe only pocket jacks and ace jacks suited. Kings and aces I'm pretty sure will be 4 betting. His strongest hand preflop? My read is capping it at queens, which is still very unlikely to not 4 bet jam with his stack size. So when the villain leads out here, I'm putting him on a pocket pair, with queens being the only pair that beats me, or flush draw. If he had hit a set then so be it. The turn is a queen. The villain now jams all in for $80, around 2 thirds the pot. I do tank for a little bit. In the end, I decide to go with my initial read, capping the villain at queens, and since the turn card queen makes it even less likely for him to have it, I flick in the call. The river is a brick. The villain shows pocket eights, and I table a hand to take this one down. This hand, I pick up pocket deuces in the low jack position. Under the gun folds, plus one limps, the middle position folds. I decide to limp to set mine. High jack folds, cutoff calls, button folds, and a small blind calls. The big blind however does not check. He raises to $20. Only plus one and myself calls. 
It's three way into a flop of king eight three with two diamonds. Everyone checks. The turn is an offsuit five, essentially a brick. Everyone checks to me. With the villains checking twice, it's tough to say if my hand is in the lead now, even though I'm quite sure they both do not have the king. Checking to try and get the showdown is okay here, but random pocket pairs and 8x hands can potentially beat me at showdown. I decide to start barreling now, expecting to possibly fire big on the river on a good scare card if I get one caller. Keeping in mind I have a diamond that can rep a flush of diamond lands on the river. In general though, I can likely fold out 8x hands and pocket pairs on the river. There's also a chance I am protecting what could be the best hand now as well. I bet $30. Both villains think for a bit, and they both fold. It is at this point that I get a text message from none other than Trevor. He is enjoying a beer at a bar that is attached to the casino and asked me to join him. So I take a break from the table and meet up with him. Trevor graciously buys me a beer and we end up having a nice discussion about low stakes strategy as well as some of my own game leaks. Thanks for the beer, Trevor. After a good talk and ice cold beer, we both head back to the poker room and I take my own seat while Trevor waits for one to open up. My first hand sitting back down, I pick up pocket threes in the small blind. There are four limpers. I call and the big blind checks. It's six way into a flop of ace queen three. Amazing flop with bottom set, I'm just going to lead out strong and hope to get max value from an ace. I bet $20. The hijack and button calls. The turn is a seven. I bet again for value, this time at $60. Unfortunately, everyone folds. This hand, I have pocket jacks in the hijack position. The middle position and the low jack limps. I raise it to $20. Only the limpers call. It's three way to a flop of king jack six. Another amazing flop as I hit middle set. What's better than flopping a set? It's when the villain leads out. The middle position bets $75. The low jack calls. I contemplate if I need to raise here. I pretty much for sure have the best hand, with no 3-bet action pre-flop, pocket kings won't be in the mix here, I'm most likely facing a strong king, which would be drawn dead, and maybe cooler at someone holding pocket 6s. I look at everyone's stacks. The low jack only has $35 left, so he's getting everything in without question. The middle position does have more than $300. If I raise, it might rep too much strength and allow him to get away. I decide to flat call and let him keep the betting lead. The turn is a 5 of hearts. Introducing a flush draw on board, the middle position leads out again, this time for $100. The low jack puts in his remaining stack. I look at the stack sizes and now the middle position has only around $200 behind half of what the pot is. I think he's committed enough to stack off now. I don't want to give him a chance to check fold the river on what some might deem as a weird scare card. I go all in. The villain calls. The river is a 10. We table our hands and I take this one down, beating ace-king and king-queen. This hand, I pick up 9-10 of diamonds at the middle position. There's an under the gun straddle for $5. I open to $15. Only the button and under the gun calls. It's three way to a flop of 10 deuce deuce rainbow. Under the gun checks to me. I see bet for $15. And that's good enough to take it down. This is my last interesting hand of the night before I rack up. This is a shot of my chip stack. And here are my results. I bought it for $700 and cashed out for $1,290. That is a profit of $590. If you have been watching my videos and have been enjoying them, please remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a lot. Thank you for watching and I hope you look forward to the next episode. Oh.
Yeah. Can we film it? You cannot do that.